so Steve, Steve, what you what you doing, man? What you doing with all that new stuff, huh? Tell, tell us, tell us. Well, uh, first of all, you noticed me pull out of my box some my Mary Blue. Hope I'm saying that right. My Mary Blue is an Italian artist grade paint. It's just something I wanted to try. It's highly rated on the uh, handprint site. Uh, there's some pros that use it and love it. And no, you know, first of all, just to anticipate the question, no, I, I don't have a new favorite. No, I don't have any problems with M. Graham. M. Graham is still my, my go-to paint. But you know me, I like to test. Love to test, actually. And I, I kind of combine two ideas. Many of you are familiar with the portable painter. Steve Padden started this as a, I remember if it was Indiegogo or Kickstarter, one of those. It was, it was crowdfunded either way. And it was just a great little product. And he did a, a couple follow-up revisions to it, uh, mainly including this band, which goes on the, um, the cup. If you're not at all familiar, if you haven't seen anything about this, everything fits into this little kit, right? And it all connects with this clip. I did a review uh, of this probably over a year ago, uh, but it was of the original version. And really it hasn't changed that much. Still, uh, it was the crowdfunded version. He now sells this on his website, on the portablepainter.com website. And he's got a lot of great information. Uh, so I, if you're at all interested in it, I'd go over there and, and take a look. Uh, so it's no longer a crowdfunded thing. And you got this little kind of, makes this kind of little table-like thing. And it can go over your knee if you're all plein air. And these will fill with water. This thing here is meant to either hold the clip this way. I found it easy to just take this, this uh, rubber bandy thing. Just stretch it and that thing goes uh, right on very easily. And then I just, I just put it around the thing. So, back to my Mary Blue. I thought, well, it's cool. This is, this is a new deal for me that I want to try. And while I'm at it, let me try some new paints. So this has been filled with my Mary Blue. This is my card. I had uh, basically 11 paints here, and I wanted to pick a, a 12th. So I ended up getting a, a raw sienna. So that's going to go in this final slot there. Actually, I ended up getting two. I've got a turquoise green, and I'm probably going to stick that like over here. And maybe somewhere I'll put some white gouache. So basically, I'm making myself a new uh, plein air palette. Uh, now, the, the other revisions he made, uh, these little pans, they don't snap in. I guess some it didn't bother me that they were loose, because I never turn these things upside down, but I guess some people bothered. So he came uh, out with these uh, little sticky dots, double stick dots to hold them in there. I haven't used them because I like the idea of being able to move them around or take them out, maybe get a whole new set of colors to put in there. So I'm not going to use the dot. So that's the portable painter. That's what I'm doing with my Mary Blue. I can't give you any opinions on my Mary Blue yet. I have not used it. You will see me using this on occasion as an alternate watercolor sketching box. So look for that in the future and look for some reports on what I think of my Mary Blue. You know, you saw me pull those gouache sets. Uh, I ordered these both from Blick. Now I have a selection of M. Graham gouache and I'm very happy with that. M. Gouache is an artist's gouache. Uh, a lot of you may be familiar with Winsor Newton. Winsor Newton has what they call designer's gouache and it has long been used by graphic designers, commercial illustrators. For the most part, I think Winsor Newton's uh, light fast archival uh, nature is pretty decent, but you're getting more companies like My Mary Blue and uh, M. Graham, which state that their gouache is, is light fast and archival for and good for artists. So I'm just trying some different ones, okay? Now this, this Holbein set here, I was a little surprised at how small it was, this is about a $40 set. This, uh, though, was impressive. Uh, the My Mary Blue gouache was 20 milliliter tubes. It was more expensive, it was like $67, but I think all, all in all is a better value. So I'll be reporting on those in, a, in addition to the M. Graham that I already have. 
I've also been using this set a lot, this Kirindosh Gouache Studio. This is the only pan set that I have, and I've been real happy with it. It was probably about $40 or $50, and it probably is not real light fast. I'm only using gouache mostly in sketchbook work. I'm not doing a lot in my finished studio watercolors that will hang. There may be some, but if I do, I'll be sure to use Artist gouache. Also, the My Mary came with this little set box, which it didn't, it wouldn't close all the way really well, and it's blue, so you're supposed to be able to use this, I guess, as a palette. I'm not going to. I just think that this was a good value. When I bought individual tubes of Mgram, I paid more than $67. It's kind of hard to find light fast information on gouache, but it is out there. Uh, these have star ratings. Most of these are three. I'm assuming that's their highest. And a couple of them, like the yellow and the red and the, this bright green, have two. So that usually means uh, good or acceptable light fast. Whenever I do use gouache, I tend to stay in the lighter colors unless I'm doing a fully gouache painting. And I'm going to start to do a few of those because uh, I like using the toned paper. But we will see what happens. Never fear, my watercolor lovers, who are not interested in gouache. I'm not changing the format of my channel, and it's going to continue to be mainly about watercolor. Transparent watercolor. Yeah, so a lot of you saw me pull uh, the splash books out of the box. And what I wanted to just show you is that these things go back years. This is splash one, and this is splash two. And I've just been trying to go back and fill in some of the earlier volumes. Take a look through these. Just a lot of great inspiration in there. And they're still available. still can be had on, on Amazon. Uh, I just go to the used section and try to find something that's in, in decent shape. I don't look for new. And a reasonable used price. I think both of these I got for under $15. So I thought that was a bargain. You know, originally these are like $30, $35, I think. I don't remember what the new ones are now, but I think they're about 35 now. So if you collect splash annuals, like looking at the splash annuals, don't rule out the old ones. They're still available. Number. I was surprised how many sellers there are on Amazon that still sell these used. It's amazing how many magazines you can accumulate over the years. And what's interesting is I've been through these magazines no less than a dozen times over the last 30 years and gleaned several out. And I keep going back through them because I just don't have unlimited space. And keeping some and then realizing some I need to toss. Well, it's time to do it again. But it's actually kind of fun because uh, some of these magazines are like trips down memory lane. I, I go back through, sometimes I don't even remember, I don't notate why I kept them. Uh, sometimes it's very obvious and I'll look and see an article or a picture or something. I say, oh yeah, I remember why I kept that. I don't need that anymore. So that's been the mode I've been in. But what's cool are the discoveries, the discoveries that you forgot about. I ran across one and that leads me into something that I want to talk about. Found both of these old uh, watercolor magazines. Uh, this one's seven years old, this is 10 years old, and these are some of the newer ones that I kept. But uh, they both had articles in them about Stephen Scott Young. I've had a number of you ask me about Stephen Scott Young, and I've had a number of you also want me to talk more about the artist that inspired me. Probably one of the most inspirational artists on me in recent years. I only learned about him when I saw one of his works at our local museum. That probably goes back 25 years. And so I'm anxious to reread these articles. But Stephen Scott Young works in watercolor, dry brush. He does etchings. His primary subject matter are black children. And he used to hire models in Florida. He would actually hire the model and their parent uh, as a chaperone. 
he does it because he loves the skin tones. He's been asked if there's anything political about it, and and he's sensitive to the political issues and the the racial issues. But it it really was not anything about that that drew him to it. I think his wife is African American, or she may be Bahamian. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, um, he was inspired, I think, by Winslow Homer, uh, and maybe somebody else. I can't recall that. Uh, used black people in their paintings and he just liked the contrast of the white and black so you'll see that a lot beyond the subject matter uh his design and composition is just outstanding he he mixes passages of loose with passages of tight which is something i like to do some of it is so moody but i mean there's just some great design elements here a lot of you asked me, what do you mean by design? Desi and I'm going to do a dedicated episode on that sometime. Design is sort of like composition on steroids. I would define composition as the pleasing arrangement of your subject and your elements within a painting. Design is taking composition a step further and including elements that work together in a graphic way. In other words, if this were not a little girl, uh, if you were to to reduce everything in this painting to a shape and design those shapes and the way those shapes interact, um, that's sort of uh, design, what designing a painting is. I mean, that's amazing. Nice, pleasing composition. You know, you've got the buckets, you've got her sitting in this chair, you've got beautiful textural and color elements. But let's forget for a moment that we're looking at um, a subject that we can identify. You know, a young girl sitting in a chair next to some tubs in a bucket. Let's just look at them as graphic shapes. And we have a beautiful flow. Even the hinge is pointing at the subject. You have a nice horizontal strength here in this board. And everything just works together as a compositional shape and as a graphic element, creating a graphic design. So I could abstract these and I would still have uh, a really interesting and I think s nice subject. And you can't forget also in design and composition that values matter, which I think is one of the reasons uh, he likes black skin so much and the white contrast is he's using that as a graphic element. You know, you just get great contrast here in these shapes. And uh, again, it's repeated here in the tub with a dark, with a dark, kind of looks like soil, with the dark shadow that travels underneath that shed. He just loves those contrasting graphic elements. So that's a little bit of a uh, description of what happens when uh, you design, you put design in your painting, put more design in addition to just pleasing composition. And I'm just extremely inspired by Stephen Scott Young. Look at the design in this painting. It's great composition. Uh, somebody who goes by the rote rules of composition, which I think those rules can be broken many times. We'll look at this first of all and say, oh, you never put a subject right smack dab in the middle. Well, did he? Did he really put your center of interest or your focus? Look where she's looking. She's looking off to her right, our left. He's got this shadow. And so your, your vision, although she's the main subject, your vision is drawn to this area. And this strong horizontal kind of leads into that area as well. So this side up into the middle of her becomes subordinate. And these great clothespins, I mean, that's just cool. It's, it's obviously something covering whatever is in those tubs and those are holding it down, but look how that is used as a design element. Now, look how the window is offset to her head. So we're, again, pulled over to this side. Very intuitive composition, but just very strong design. He uses a lot of tempera. Uh, this is uh, watercolor and tempera mixed. It does a lot of dry brush watercolor as well. You know, I guess influential artists, are for me, are the ones that every time I pull out their work, um, I have to pick my jaw back up off the floor every time. Every time. Artists that reach this level, they have several things in common. They have a mastery of the medium, and that almost comes first. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, since several of you have asked me, please talk more about the artists that influenced you. This is one uh, of my favorites. Well, anyway, on with the purging. 
Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know who your most influential artist has been. That'd be something I'd like to know. Hopefully in the future I'll cover more of these artists and talk about their work. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you in the next video.